Hey guys, what's going on? Blaine back for another Netflix review, and today I'm going to be talking about Bird Box Barcelona. Bird Box Barcelona is a Spanish horror movie serving as a spin-off sequel to the previous Bird Box entry, and tells the story of Sebastian, a wayward man who tries his best to survive the Barcelona cityscape after an apocalyptic event occurs in which a mysterious entity compels those who observe it to commit suicide. Sebastian becomes influenced by a cult leader during his struggle to survive, going out of his way to deceive others and expose them to the entity so that he can fulfill the doctrines of his faith. However, after meeting a new group of survivors, he starts to question his faith, as he becomes encouraged to guide them to a shelter that could protect them from the entity. I was just as unimpressed with this movie as I was with the first Bird Box movie. It's definitely not bad, as it does a good job retaining a tense atmosphere and expanding its world, but I found myself confused as to what direction the story was going, and the boring characters didn't help with this. Sebastian had the potential to be a decent character, and his actor does a good job in delivering an emotionally compelling performance, but he's just plain boring. Aside from being a seer who isn't affected by the entities, he's essentially a reworked version of Sandra Bullock's character from the first movie, and that he tries to protect a little girl throughout the movie's events and even this aspect isn't done very well. At least in the first movie, the children's roles were more understandable, whereas here, it doesn't make as much sense. Because he spends so much time deceiving and killing others, and takes so long to develop any sort of redemption arc, I couldn't bring myself to care about him. The only sort of character development that he has is his relationship with his daughter, Anna. She appears as an apparition to motivate him to continue saving people so that he can join her in heaven. The idea sounds fine at first, but as the movie went on, I found myself wondering, wouldn't it be easier for him to just kill himself? I may not be up to speed on this series lore, but it was a question that kept bugging me the whole time I watched this movie. I understand that he's being brainwashed by Anna and he has to break the conditioning and all that, but if he really wanted to see her that badly, it seems like that would be the easiest way to do so. All of the other characters in the movie are even more flat compared to Sebastian. They pretty much exist either only as plot devices to help drive the story forward, or to serve as meat for the movie's kill scenes, and oftentimes they serve both purposes. Now, to their credit, the actors do a good job in their roles, and there is some nice characterization going on with Sophia, how she compares to Anna, and how this influences Sebastian over the course of the story, it's just that they're all so forgettable. I honestly had a hard time remembering many of their names, because none of them have any sort of arc. I was surprised to even see a follow-up to something like Bird Box, but also excited, because it gives the opportunity to expand on the movie's world, and it does somewhat succeed in doing this. One of the best things about this movie is the fact that it takes place in Barcelona, and the execution of its setting in this regard is excellent. This movie does a fantastic job at painting a dark and desolate picture of a post-apocalyptic Barcelona, showing how widespread the results of the event were beyond the first movie. Barren city streets, wrecked cars, and dead bodies all serve as a grim reminder of the horror that happened, and still happens to that point. The horror atmosphere is conveyed very well through its aesthetics as well. The whispers of the entities, the dark lighting inside buildings, and the ambient soundtrack all raise the tension at the right time, and that's without getting into the moments where things go sideways. Just like the first movie, the sequel has a decent amount of violent action and death scenes to enjoy. Most of the kills are memorable in how they're pulled off, and never feel like they're there just for the sake of pure carnage. Of course, there are movies that suit that purpose well, but in this case they're mostly taken seriously, which suits the purposes of its story. However, I found myself annoyed by the number of instances where people expose their eyes and kill themselves in what would otherwise be entirely preventable situations, and they really took me out of the movie. There's one scene where a man lifts his blindfold to look for his dogs in broad daylight, and I was so annoyed by it. I was like, honestly, what did you think was going to happen? Being that this is a sequel of sorts, I expected there would be some kind of explanation to reveal the origin and true purpose of the entities that cause people to commit suicide, but unfortunately it just doesn't happen. Apart from a few theories, the entity remains just as vague as it did the first time around. It doesn't explain why some people have the ability to become seers and resist the entities, where the entities themselves came from, and what kind of energy it is that comes out of people when they die. It just leaves everything open for interpretation, and it gets frustrating after a while. There's nothing wrong with leaving some questions for audiences to ponder, but the idea of a sequel, even in a spin-off, is that there should be some sort of evolution behind the elements of the series. Instead of doing that, the movie just retreads the same old ground as the first one. This results in the story becoming more and more boring as it progresses. Slow burn tension in the movie is one thing, and the kill scenes are entertaining enough, but they're spread so thin in between the story bits with people just talking and talking and not really saying anything, and in a story that already basically copies the first movie. Flashbacks help add some backstory to the movie's events where they can, and it is appreciated when they occur. Sometimes, though, it's not always obvious when they do occur. Some flashbacks are edited to indicate the passage of time, while others aren't, so this makes an already boring 
boring and confusing story even more so when it doesn't have to be. It's strange to see a movie that does so well in presenting an intense horror experience with its visuals and atmosphere, yet falls so short when it comes to its story and characters. Everything about it looks good, but it ultimately proves to be yet another example of style over substance. Overall, Bird Box Barcelona is another mediocre entry to a mediocre franchise that squanders its potential. If you like the first movie and are curious to see how a sequel may expand on its world and ideas, you might enjoy this movie, just don't expect too much out of it. I admire what this series is going for from a general point of view, but after seeing this, I can't say I'm all that interested anymore. It just doesn't accomplish what I'd expect out of a sequel, even if it is a spin-off. And while there are things it gets right, it doesn't matter much when we can see this movie for what it is, as a risk-free copycat that rides the already mediocre coattails of the original. What did you think about this movie? Did you think it was a superior follow-up to the original, or did you find it disappointing instead? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways guys, that's going to wrap up my review of Bird Box Barcelona. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always stay tuned for the next part where next time I review the Mexican comedy The Almost Legends. Bye bye!